Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Fleekazoid Podcast. Today's episode is about blocking him. If you're the Scorpio listening to this right now, go ahead and fast forward seven minutes in. That's where your story time is. And if you are the felon listening to this podcast, I have your story time starting around the two minute and 30 second mark. This whole thing isn't about you guys, but you did inspire it. So thank you for the content and enjoy. So yes, today we are talking about blocking him. Him as in that man that you're dealing with who might not even really be your man, maybe a situationship, or maybe just a relationship that's not going right. A man who you find yourself begging to do the bare ass minimum, somebody who you're begging to give you basic communication, respect, or somebody who's treating you very casual and you've made it known like, hey, I'm not someone that you're gonna treat casually. Blocking him once and for all and never looking back. And this one is actually going to be based on a fairly recent example of something that happened in my life, but I want to make it apply to you guys. So this is going to start off with two story time examples, and then we'll ramp it up into the El Pasión speech of today's message. But it's all relevant. It all ties together. So bear with me. It's going to seem really hard to imagine the benefits of blocking a man. And truly, some people just don't block someone until they are fed up and ready. Blocking makes sense when it's somebody who can't stay, but they won't go. They come in and out of your life. They create this revolving door. Maybe you're addicted to them. It might not even be a situationship. It could be an addiction ship, and they know it. They're lonely. They want validation. They want attention. They use you for all of those sources. And you, liking them, having a soft spot in your heart for that person, lets it happen. And it's at no fault of your own. It's just something that happens with a specific person because of what the relationship might mean to you or where you are in your life. I came to my own realization why blocking is beneficial at the ripe age of 27 when I realized that this man had his first opportunity to be with me. And given that opportunity, he decided to let me go. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I like someone or I love someone or I want a future with that person... Leaving them is unfathomable. I would never even leave the opportunity for another person to sneak into the cracks. And neither should that man. And if we're going to get specific here, it was the felon. And with the felon, I specifically remember like him coming in very strong, very consistent, very vocal about what he wanted with me, which was pretty dramatic, saying that he wanted to be on the pipeline of girlfriend, boyfriend, proposal by one year, and then eventually maybe like marriage and kids, which was like, whoa, okay. Um, It was so strong. It was like, we'll see, buddy. So it was easy for me to not fully believe it. But when that man got what he wanted physically, and then he faded out over time, like literally within the next day of getting what he wanted. And this is a whole entire podcast episode, by the way, if you guys haven't seen the episode called Limerence, Emotional Dysregulation, He's like the very end of of the story time. Yeah, so when this man got what he wanted, that's when suddenly he stopped sending me songs. I stopped getting good morning texts. It was just so obvious why he was saying all those dramatic things and what he was really there for. And eventually, he just completely stopped texting me. After three days of him not texting me, I had to ask myself, what the fuck kind of relationship was I actually a part of? Like, this man... Stopped talking to me and stopped being all the amazing things that he was in the beginning after he fucked me. The story time goes into this in depth, but basically, you guys, as a follow up to this story time, I want to let you all know that after one month and 20 days, this dude decided to send me a voicemail. Mind you, he switched up entirely, he started falling back. Then he went three whole days without texting me for the first time ever in our whole entire dynamic with no communication. I tried to reach out to him and he ignored me. And I was only going to allow myself to be ignored for three days before I decided, no, like I'm blocking his ass. I don't consider myself a person with enormous pride, but what the actual fuck? Anyways, this voicemail. If you guys want to laugh with me, I'm going to play it right now. Yo, you should give me a call. This is Bye. He sent me that a whole month and 20 days after I blocked him. And can we just talk about the ending? Like, sir, you're trying to come back into my life with that voicemail? No. 
to me, it's like you had an opportunity to date me. You literally deliberately stopped responding to me when you saw that I had texted you and you let me walk away. And to me, that's all the validation that I needed to know that that's a man who shouldn't be in my life. Now, if we want to get into the nitty gritty of it, if you were to ask a man what had taken place here, they would probably tell you that this is a guy who had found someone else and he didn't know how to tell me. And he decided that instead of telling me, he was just going to stop talking to me altogether because that's fucking awkward. That's weird. Like, who wants to have that conversation? And so he passive aggressively just decided to move on in silence. And then, hey, who knows? Maybe one month and 20 days later, that thing fell apart. And that's when he decided, let me send her a text. Let me send her a voicemail. I had actually taken the effort to block him on Instagram. And I know that he didn't have any other avenue of reaching out to me. Looking back on it, me and my friends did key key about the possibility of unblocking him, but it was like, absolutely not. Obviously, because he was dumb enough to let me go, but there was this other aspect of him who had completely lied about his past. Like, if anybody remembers the story time that I had put up about emotional dysregulation, limerence, it's a whole podcast episode. Please go check it out. This man was felonious, right? So he had a crime record, and he wasn't fully honest about what was on that crime record. After I realized I was being ghosted and ignored by this man, I was like, it's time to go check it out and see what is on this thing. Which, by the way, if a guy ever tells you he has a criminal record, don't let him be the one to tell you, please go take that shit to Google. Go find out for yourself what's exactly on that or else you could be like me one month down the road wondering, why is this guy weird? (laughs) But yeah, so it was like, okay, this guy had so many other issues that could have been uh, discovered earlier on. But when you block them you're saying no you don't get a chance to sweet talk your way back into my life you don't get a chance to paint the hope that you gave me in the beginning you're not getting the opportunity to talk to me again or be graced with my presence and energy which is fucking valuable let's take it away from the felon and talk about the scorpio because oh girlies this one's recent like literally today recent it's actually the inspiration for this episode Um, If anybody's been following my YouTube, my Twitch, my TikTok, this has kind of been like an ongoing saga that started back in September and literally just like fell apart in November. And by the time it was like around November, this dude had made an established pattern of taking me into his world and then pushing me out. And when I say taking me into his world, I mean inviting me over at midnight and treating me like a side piece. I had seen things that I perceived as good and I would get glimpses of it from time to time and then I would get treated so fucking casually and the gag was that I liked him so much that I didn't want it to end. I was comfortable with it. I had formed highs off of it and while I accepted that our dynamic was never going to be what I wanted it to be, I was doing everything I could to justify it in my life just so I could have something in my life. And to make it completely clear, this was a situationship inviting me over last minute at night, no warning, not talking to me for like a week, then being like, oh, well, you could have reached out to me. Then the time that I finally did reach out to him, he ghosted me. And it was just like this constant on and off that was making me feel horrible. But the most hilarious thing was that I convinced myself that I liked him so much. I had built a codependent mindset around him. Like, I felt like I could not live a life without him in it. So I was happy to have him in any capacity that he was willing to be in it, which is so fucking sad. So the pattern here was that we would be on one week, off for the next two. He would come in, he would come out, he would basically like me once or twice maybe we would have a sleepover and then I would eventually start making these TikToks that were obviously about him and then he would blame these TikToks being so negative that he didn't want to deal with somebody who does that if you're from the future watching this podcast today these TikToks date back from September 2021 to basically now actually uh February 5th Unless a man more dusty and traumatizing happens to show up in my life, he is the main subject matter of my heartbreak TikToks, my have some boundary TikToks. Like most of these TikToks happen to be around the lessons that I learned from him. And then some of the TikToks that I made about him are joking about Dusty's because yes, he is one. And if he doesn't want me to have anything bad to say, then he shouldn't have done something bad. 
So November comes around. This is basically like the fourth time we've called it off. But it was him. He specifically called it off with me. And he doesn't reach out to me ever after that point. And then I remember before Christmas time, like just a few days before it came around, I told myself, while I have done a lot of the nitty gritty hard work of moving on emotionally, there's still a soft spot in there and I cannot handle seeing like any type of text during this time of the year. And I was also kind of angry too. I'm making these podcasts and a lot of these things are based off him and I don't like explicitly say it all the time. So one day I was recording the podcast before uploading it and I decided, you know what, I'm going to block him. I don't want this mess popping up around the holidays. It had actually been over a month. He had not tried to reach out to me, period. I actually convinced myself that he never would. I just happened to be in the middle of recording a podcast and I was pretty irritated by the fact that I kept having so many examples to use him as that I'm like, dude, why would I ever allow somebody like this to message me again? So I went and I blocked him on my phone and it turned out that he tried to message me on Christmas. He also tried to message me on New Year's. He realized he was blocked and then he went to my Instagram to evade the block. And I know this because when he went to my Instagram to evade the block, he told me about the times that he tried to reach out only for me to come to find out that he has been following me this entire time. And I told him, I'm like, this is why you get blocked because You can't decide if you want to stay or go, so I have to block you and make that decision for the both of us. Because he was nonstop inviting me in, kicking me out, and it was basically like he would f*** me, get like satisfaction of having f*** me, kind of like string me along just to be completely crappy, ghost me, and be very casual and deliberately just like neglectful of me. And I had probably gone through the healing process like three times at this point. It's like, how many times am I going to deal with the same breakup from this one dude? It's exhausting. I don't want to keep dealing with it. One part of blocking him during Christmas time as well was me telling myself that I'm not bringing this man into 2022 with me. I was very vocal internally with myself that I'm not dealing with this little healing process with the same dude. I'm not dealing with the felon. I'm not dealing with any of the crap or the bullshit I dealt with from any of the men that I dealt with in 2021. I was very adamant that I wasn't going to let him back into my world. But the fact that I had forgotten to block him on Instagram, it's so sad. But like when I saw his name on my phone, it it came in at like what, midnight? It ended up keeping me up until 7 a.m. And today is the day that I finally re-blocked him on everything. But ever since that day, it's been three weeks since that day, I have not had a stable night of sleep. It was so deregulating to have him back in my life because I emotionally moved on in the sense that I stopped having intrusive thoughts and he wasn't like this person that I wished would be in my life anymore. I just stopped having the urge to cry. I stopped craving him as a source of happiness. My body didn't get depressed like clockwork. But seeing his name on my phone caused me to spiral emotionally and physically. Just knowing that he exists and was trying to interact with me was starting this like rapid heartbeat that like pounded in my chest that I could hear in my ears if I was laying down and this is something I would feel every time he texted me too it was really bad and I just knew like after he texted me I spiraled emotionally for three days I was being flooded with thoughts about how horrible he was to me and how that went on in my life from someone that I really cared about and I couldn't eat I couldn't make content I just was physically and mentally derailed and I spiraled because I knew even though I moved on and I found peace, peace to the point of boredom, I knew that maybe I mentally had emotionally separated, but my body still saw him as a source and a piece of like me was still wanting to have him in my life. So what did I do? Yeah, I let him back in and This is the cautionary tale for why if you block them on something, you have to block them everywhere because Instagram was a crack where he was able to slip in through. And I let him in my life for like two weeks and a half before, you know, I hit the block button today. He texted me every day until we finally hung out. He made a plan with me. He stuck to the plan. And it's sad because I was hyping it up in my mind when this is just what men do when they like you. And I was not used to him doing that, making a plan specifically. Like, this was literally a man who would only hit me up 
at the last of last minutes. And I would just be happy that he wanted to see me, period. So there's that aspect, right? Like when someone's consistently mediocre, suddenly they do something decent and you want to throw a parade. That was like week number one. After that, there was no plans to see each other. And he tried about three times to get me to come over. Like last minute, no schedule. Which I was pretty adamant with him. Like if he is going to be back in my life, that's what I'm not going to do. Like I'm not going to jump back into that routine. Like after week one... He didn't try to text me every day. He wasn't trying to make plans. Then, you know, there's this like random behavior that I'm getting in between of him sending me memes. And the memes that he was sending me were specifically gold digger memes. And then he would want to have this like conversation about gold diggers and financial dynamics in relationships. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but Scorpio is a dusty. And it's like, Fleeksy, why would you roll around in the sheets with a dusty? Well, because I was lean, like, I mean, I could tell you on and on and on where I was, but just know that I was in a dark place to where I was looking for uh, physical attention and emotional validation. But anyway, so it's one thing for him to send those things and for us to laugh about it, but he would try to start these debates. And the question had to come up eventually from me to him. Why do you do this if you don't like this stuff? And on top of him sending me stuff like that, He would want to talk very actively about marriage, specifically why he was never going to get married. And I don't know about you guys, but when you don't want to get married, especially if it's with another person, in this case me, right, you don't have these conversations all the time. In fact, marriage doesn't come up. So I brought it up to him. I'm like, why do you always talk about this? And why are you sending me these memes? I had to ask him. I'm like, am I sending off the wrong vibe? Am I acting like I want to be married to you? Because... This time around, I was very emotionally detached. I had come to terms with the fact that there was not going to be like an end of the rainbow. There was no hope. There was no future. Like I could be okay with the relationship knowing that there wasn't going to be any loss. Like, yeah, my body has a physical response to it. But mentally, I'm like, I know it's going nowhere. The concept is that where there is no future, there is no hope. There is no room for growth. There is no loss. Therefore, there is no pain which is why it makes it easier to be with someone who's emotionally unavailable if you are someone who is afraid of losing something. But you have to accept the fact that they are emotionally unavailable and that there is not going to be any particular outcome that you are attached to. But anyways, moving forward, I brought it up to him. I'm like, why are you sending me these memes when they clearly make you angry or you want to have like this long drawn out conversation about them? And then... You know, I also brought up the marriage thing as well. Like, why are you always talking about marriage? Because to me, like, I didn't mention this earlier, but marriage was something that would always come up hanging out with him. Like, not just specifically this time around, but even the previous times around. And he was, like, saying that I took something and I was, like, turning it against him, which is not necessarily the case. Um, But I did have to be, like, you know, it feels like Groundhog's Day and it feels like you don't have any original thoughts because – gold digging and financial responsibilities and marriage is the only thing you talk about with me and just because I talk about some of these things on my social media doesn't mean that that's all I want to talk about ever especially when I'm hanging out with people on my downtime so I made it a point to apologize for coming off as rude saying sorry knowing that you know just because I wasn't trying to hurt his feelings doesn't mean that I didn't but what happened next was that he ignored me for two days And then when he finally did respond, all he said was cool story, bro, where he ended up saying a half ass apology to the effect of I'm sorry that me stonewalling you hurt your feelings, but I am not sorry for ignoring you or for doing that. So problem number one, okay, this person can't communicate or deliberately chooses not to. And problem number two was that he knew it hurt my feelings, but he has no intent on being a person who won't stonewall in the future. There was no like, hey, this next time I won't be that person. Like, no, they're very okay with doing that. And this was a man who I specifically allowed back into my life because he said that he cared about me. It's one thing for you to be like, this conversation's boring or lame or I don't want to have it. Okay, well then say that. Like, don't ignore a person. Which makes the apology half ass as fuck because... Okay, you know it makes me feel bad. You knew it was something that you shouldn't do, but you're not sitting here saying, sorry, I'm not going to do it again. You're saying, sorry for how it made you feel, 
but I'm not sorry that I did it. Which is like, okay, so you're going to do it again. And despite the fact that I got that janky, horrible apology, we still ended up making up and we started texting again. But it was only a matter of, what, 32 hours before I would decide to hit the block button once and for all across the board. Which, by the way, the moment that he gave me that horrible apology, that should have been the moment that I hit the block button. The moment that... You know, he saw something as a fight and he used it as an opportunity to stonewall me for two days like a pissy little baby boy. That should have been the moment that I hit the block button. But what specifically pulled the trigger on me to hit the block and to do it all across the board, like blocking him on the dating app that we met on, blocking his Twitter, finding his TikTok accounts and blocking those as well. Like, you know, last time I just blocked his number. This time I'm like, I'm clearing the mother fucking house he had done this thing where he texted me all day long and then I asked him I was like let's see each other and then he was like okay come over and I said oh I can't tonight like I have this horse that I have to get on top of but how about tomorrow or the day after tomorrow and this guy who was rapid fire texting me all day long just stopped responding to me all together and I thought, maybe let's give it a few hours. Let's wait until the next morning, maybe the next afternoon. And by hour number 16 to 17, I had to ask myself, how much longer am I going to live with a man who like stonewalls me or who thinks it's okay to keep me in purgatory? How much longer am I going to tolerate someone who very clearly doesn't give a crap about my schedule? And let's get to the real tea of it, right? Okay, why did this man just suddenly ignore me when I asserted my boundaries and when I said no to immediately coming over and seeing him that night? Because he doesn't have a relationship with me. He has a relationship with what's in between my legs. Whatever act that he was putting on in the beginning, it's like, okay, we're back at square one. Except this time, I'm not emotionally fawning over him. Like, my body may have little palpitations or whatever, but me in my head is very mentally sound and zen with the idea of him not being around. And I told myself, every day that I spend tolerating this man stonewalling, pissy boy ignoring me behavior when I'm suddenly like backing out and not doing whatever he wants on his schedule is another day that I'm reaffirming that this treatment is okay. It's another step back in my healing. And... If I were to continue to accept it, I'm saying that this is something that he can continue to do to me. And it's not like, oh, let me just block this guy and teach him a lesson. Let me show him. No, it's if I block this man, I don't have to wonder when he's going to text me back. I don't have to wonder if today's going to be the day when he finally acts nice towards me. I am eliminating the hoping, the wondering, the yearning for someone who's going to be decent to me, who showed me that they have no desire to be. If I sat there and told him, like, hey, you know, I can't do tonight, but I still want to see you tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. What the f*** is wrong with you to where you can't even be like, no, I'm sorry, I'm busy, but maybe this time or that time. Like, clearly you don't want to see me. You don't value me. One of the reasons why I let him back into my life was because he said he actually cared about me. And to me, that's just not how you treat people you care about. And I just told myself when I blocked him that I am eliminating all future speculation, hoping, worrying, wondering, waiting. And I'm going to set myself free. Like, I'm eliminating the hope of never having to check my phone, thinking that his name's going to show up on it. And that is why you have to block someone. To live with that mental peace. And to live with that mental peace, you have to know that the person you're dealing with is not capable of change. That whatever they're doing has nothing to do with you and everything to do with where they are and what they try to use relationships for. Even if you're someone who's just in a casual relationship, you deserve respect. You deserve someone who's going to say, oh, you have a schedule? Well, yeah, let's try to line our schedules up. Not, oh, you can't come over tonight? No, I'm just going to ignore you instead of trying to line up something that works with you. Like, hello, there's two people that are a part of this, and he's not even treating you like a person at that point. He's literally treating you like Domino's delivery. When you block, it might feel like you're doing something mean. You might feel like, this is really dramatic, this is drastic, he's gonna think I care. Yeah, so the f*** what if you do care? I do care about the way that I'm treated. I do care about somebody caring about me. I don't give a f*** if it gives off this image that's like, oh, she blocked me because she liked me so much. Well, I liked you more than you liked me, and that's enough of a reason to not f*** with your ass.
anymore. And I really hope that you guys don't have to go on this merry-go-round four or five times like I have before you realize that this is a person that's not going to change. But after you deal with someone who had the opportunity to treat you right once, twice, three times, how many times does a person need to leave you before they decide that you are not for them? When do you start to ask yourself, what is my lack of boundaries doing to my self-esteem? With peace and love, you guys, it starts to get delusional. It's very clear that this person has a pattern of behavior that is not ever going to change, especially in relation to you. No matter how special you think you are or talented or beautiful or whatever high idea that this person may tell you that they have of you, it's clearly not enough to treat you with respect and they're clearly just saying whatever it takes to get back in between your legs because it's not enough to act like you are more than that. So when you hit that block button and you go across every social media platform, Instagram, Twitter, what else do you have them on? TikTok? Think of every social media outlet that they know that you exist on and think about how you are never going to allow them to see you or even track your growth. No, they lost all opportunity to interact with you as a human being. I don't care if you have this amazing glow up on the way. The fact that they know that you exist is no longer your problem. Like, you're letting them go. Nothing that they do matters at this point anymore when you hit that block button. They cannot come back. They cannot sweet talk you. They cannot tell you that they've changed. They cannot tell you how important you are to them or how highly they think of you. They had how many chances to show you that that's the person that they were? Even more than one chance being blown is enough. Life is too short to spend it around people who do not value you, who are sucking up your emotional energy and making you go through this back and forth of being broken up with and taking them back or even the possibility of living that reality. Like, fuck no. And even if you're like, oh, well, maybe there's a little bit of hope. There's a little bit of possibility for them to change. I don't want to block them because I want to see the day that that comes. Realize that you are delaying your healing you are delaying your ability to reaffirm your self-esteem and your boundaries because that day is probably not going to come. And the faster that you hit that block button and you accept with yourself that you're not even going to give them the opportunity to do that, the faster you're going to be moving forward with your life. You know, people can spend four years in these type of cycles. The craziest ones can go on for decades. Yeah, like 50 years. Do not spend another second living in a reality where you are wondering, is today going to be the day they act right? Is this morning going to be the morning I get that text message? Is today going to be the day they watch my Instagram story? Who wants to live asking these questions every single day with someone who's not already giving you a reality where that's not even a question, where it's just a guarantee? The freedom that you feel when you realize that you don't have to ask yourself these questions every single day because you decided to take control of your reality by blocking the person who makes you even ask those questions is so freeing. I'm going to be straight up. I didn't come to this conclusion on my own. I was texting my friend who was gradually pushing me closer and closer towards the edge of like staring down the cliff of what it looks like to live in a reality where that man is blocked. And I was like, I'm getting closer to it. I'm getting closer to it. Like I'm on the edge. I'm on the edge. And she just kept reaffirming the fact that this was sad. I deserve better. He clearly does not value me. He is not the person that I should have in my life. He's not good for my mental health. Like nothing about that man being in my world was a benefit to me. Just the daily uncertainty alone that gets caused every single day by not knowing whether this person's going to be a part of my world, show up the way that I want them to. The way that that can take over your mind and consume your day is so f toxic that there's no reason to allow yourself to go through that type of mental pain you're officially starting a cycle of positive and negative reinforcement that becomes addicting it's a formula for a trauma bond and I know how it is you only want to block this person when it feels good to block them you only want to block them when you finally tell yourself like this is what I need this is the moment that caused it for me and I hate that that happens to some people because I am some people like had my friend not pushed me closer and closer towards the edge by reminding me of my my value and reminding me of the reality that I'm living in and how 
f***ing sad it is that I'm dealing with someone who does this to me. Like I probably would have never done it the day that I did it, which is haha today. I probably would have been like, mm, I'll give him another 24 hours to potentially ghost me. Uh, I'll give him another 30 hours. Well, maybe if I let him back, I can give him the opportunity to be yelled at by me. No, no. I just blocked him silently on everything. Now where I did f*** up, <laughs> I was on Bumble trying to unmatch him because that was the last place where he could have potentially reached out to me. And my nails are long and I accidentally hit call and I didn't get to end the call right away and it rang for like five seconds. So I just know that it's going to show up on the app. I know he's going to see that I tried to call him on there. And I really just wanted this man to find out that he got blocked in the middle of the night when he was feeling lonely and sad out of nowhere. But no, now he has been sent the smoke alarm and it's very f***ing unfortunate, but ah, it happened. I did it. I did it on everything. And once you finally do it too, the weight that is off your shoulders when you no longer have to live with the sense of delusion of false hope. I really hope that you get to that place. If I can't convince you to do this, I want you to go talk to your mom, your brother, your sister, anyone that you know, or even go on the internet and, and ask them, please motivate me to block this man. Tell me what I need to hear to block this person. Go on YouTube and type in why I should block this person, why blocking is important. Tell yourself everything that you need to tell yourself that's going to push you closer to blocking this individual. Because there is no reason for somebody who has abused your kindness, your love, took you for granted, showed you that they did not value you, or someone who just does not care about your well-being, time, and schedule to have access to you. If anything, they have shown you all the reasons why they should never be allowed in your life ever again. This person might not be physically abusive, but what they are doing is abusive. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when the situation is really bad, you don't even dare to let your friends know what you're going through. You won't tell your mom, your sister, like no one gets to know because you already know what they're going to say, which is already sign number one that what you're dealing with is something that's not good for you. Like if you can't brag on it, oh my god, bestie, please, we got to get you out of there. I hope that you guys don't have to go through even one year cycles where people put you through this type of thing. I hope that you can see it for what it is after two months or three months or hell, God, let it be like the felon and you know, you find out after one month and you cut them cold turkey right after they showed you that they had their opportunity with you and they absolutely fucking squandered it. Obviously, I am not one of God's strongest soldiers because I wasn't even able to achieve this task on my own. I had a friend who would not let her boot off my neck until I did this thing, but she didn't do it like in a way where she forced me to do it. She had to remind me of my value and the situation that's in front of me. So please, whoever you do allow to help you out with this, don't let them just sit there and be like a parrot and be like, block him, block him. No, they have to actually be supportive. They have to speak to the situation. They have to remind you of the values. And after everything is said and done, a good friend is going to tell you that the way that they treated you is not a reflection of who you are or what you deserve or what you are going to get after them. And look, you might develop a really strong block hand game after you do something like this. Like you might not let any mother slide through your cracks after you start to recognize disrespect and bad behaviors that operate in patterns and I really hope that you get to that place because you are literally going to be like the terminator on these hoes. There's a lot of emotions that can come with blocking someone. Right away, you're going to feel so proud of yourself. You're going to be happy. You're going to justify it. You're going to text all your friends. You're going to want to make this like announcement on social media that you did it. You finally fucking did it. Like you got the strength to do it, which is, yes, an awesome thing. Be proud of yourself. But the next day when you wake up and you're sitting there and it's like normally you're in that thought process of thinking about this person just because out of like habit, you're going to be sitting there and it's going to be a different feeling. Now, I can't say whether you're still going to be excited, happy, and proud of yourself. For me, myself, I personally felt like shocked and despondent that I had ever let somebody treat me so poorly and that it took me so long just to block them. If you're hoping that blocking a person is going to change them or teach them a lesson, you are still trying to fix that person, which you cannot fix. And when you're blocking them, coming from that place of, oh, let me show them, let me teach them what they did wrong, 
The chances of taking that person back once they come back, if they, you know, decide to continue their abuse cycle of you, is going to be in their favor because you are coming from a place of having blocked them from a mental space, doing it in mind with a lesson being taught that you were trying to change them, that you were going to fix them, that they just had to go without you for a little bit to figure out what life was like without your blessing and your amazing presence. And I'm not saying that they didn't actually miss it. However, they're not coming back to cherish it. They're not coming back to value it. They're not coming back to make you realize how special you are because they're only going to do that for maybe like hmm two minutes three minutes and then what do these guys do they fuck you and then they go back to breadcrumbing you and they just repeat the cycle all over again and I know because I've been through it and if they show you even once that they have the capacity to treat you like that and to do that to you instead of showing you that they would never leave you or never mistreat you believe it that they are going to do it again and again and again these people don't change The only thing that changes is that they get fatter, uglier, balder, or maybe they find another person who's going to tolerate it. They just look for individuals who are going to put up with it and tolerate their shitty little cycles for years. Like these people can literally do it for years. They will literally never change. So when you block, you tell yourself, this is an ending. This means no more mysteries. This means no more hopeful, wishful thinking that they're going to treat me right. That today is going to be the day that they're going to be the man that they should have been all along. Your block is a definitive action that you need to take all across the board because this person has shown you that they are abusive. Now, you might think maybe they just need to get therapy. Maybe they just need to talk to a friend. Maybe they just need to date around and then realize how special I am. No, that's not going to change them. People who feel entitled to treat you poorly are people who cannot be changed with therapy. In fact, therapy can make them even more manipulative. The worst part about this cycle that they put you through is the immense anger that you feel towards yourself and towards them that ends up binding you to them almost even worse than your attraction to them does. So after you hit that block, you need to know that it's going to be okay to mourn. It's going to be okay to grieve what you thought was going to be good for you but ended up not being. You need to get past the grief cycle so that you can move into the acceptance cycle. So yeah, sit there. Think about what you lost. Think about what you never had. Think about what that person did to you that was wrong because that's an act of building up your self-esteem. And whatever you do, try to experience emotions with intentions. Don't just marinate in sad thoughts. Also remember, you are not your thoughts. So while you may have moments of withdrawal, while you might miss that person or you might miss whatever you felt like were highlights and good moments, those thoughts are like clouds in the sky. Let them drift by. Do not live on them. Remember that emotions Emotions and feelings are temporary. Whatever you feel right now, whether it's sadness or anger or grief, you will move past it. But you do have to be proactive about how you experience your emotions. Just because you block them doesn't mean that you're not going to get intrusive thoughts about them. And yeah, those thoughts can be angry. They can be violent. They can be sexual. It's going to happen. But what you need to sit there and do is tell yourself, we're not doing that today. I don't have to live like this. I don't have to have this mental rumination take over my life. This is why reading books is important. This is why taking on hobbies are important. This is why working out is going to be so important. You need to break the negative feedback loop that this person has created in your mind that has taken over your mind. But you can't do that by scrolling on TikTok and laying in bed all day. While yes, you do need to feel the grief and the sorrow and you have to allow yourself to actually go through it, at some point, you have to surround yourself with friends. You have to take yourself out of these dopamine depleting activities. Go to your local park, go for a walk, listen to a podcast, do something that feeds your brain new thoughts. And I say all of this to remind you that just because you miss them, just because you think about them, just because you have a thought that makes you think maybe I should text them does not mean that you should act on it. I'll repeat what I said earlier in this podcast that when you block that man, you are telling yourself that you have accepted that he is never going to change, that you are never going to wonder if he's ever going to text you in the morning or if he's ever going to text you at night or if he's ever going to stop stonewalling you or if he's ever going to finally show up as the dude that he was supposed to be all along. You are removing the hope, the wishful thinking, and you are setting yourself free. You are untethering yourself from all of the daily contemplation and wondering and speculation if this guy is ever going to be the guy that you needed him to be. And just because you say today's the day I'm going to start my healing doesn't mean that it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows. Yes, you can be sad. You're allowed to be. Be fucking sad. And if the thought of that man coming back makes you feel better, you are not actually healing. You need to feel the sadness of knowing that he's not coming back and he's not going to come back as the guy that you want him to be. 
That's literally impossible. Unless somebody puts a chip in that man's brain and converts him into a person who can have healthy, normal relationships and is capable of loving, he's not going to be the man that you want, need, or deserve. And I know the thought of blocking him across every single social media platform seems dramatic as fuck, but what are you getting out of knowing that this man is looking at your profile besides the constant thought of looking at your own profile trying to see it through his eyes? What does that do for you? How does that serve you? Free yourself mentally by knowing that this man will never experience you, have the opportunity to come back to you, or will even get the ability to know what you're up to. It is so fucking untethering when you release yourself from the constant toxic wondering thoughts about what is on this man's mind. The goal is to know that you have this big, blank, white, empty canvas of a future that has no image of him in it. It might seem scary, it might feel unknown, but guess what? The best things in our life come from the scary and unknown. It comes from the things that make us uncomfortable. And this thought of living a life without the devil that you know might seem like, oh, I can't predict what's going to come my way. Be okay with the fact that you can't and just know that it's going to lead you to new experiences that can change you. So I'm going to reel it back and I think this is where the podcast ends. If you are struggling with missing a toxic person despite everything that happened in the relationship and where you are currently right now knowing that they shouldn't be in your life at all, I have a YouTube video about this on my official Fleeksy channel. It's called Why We Miss People Who Were Toxic To Us. Please go check that out. I also have a few TikToks talking about this as well if you go to my breakup playlist on TikTok. So go check that out. I am Fleeksy on TikTok just like I am Fleeksy on YouTube. Other videos that could help you out with missing toxic people and understanding why you are emotionally reeling and how to get out of that would be some of my breakup videos on my YouTube channel. I also have a podcast episode about emotional dysregulation and being in limerence. Please, please, please take in everything that you can get. Like the therapy is going to be everything for you right now if you're struggling with redeveloping your self-worth. Moving on from someone is so much more than just being this person who lets time do all the healing. With breakups, you have to be proactive about your healing. It's going to take so much more than time, especially if it's somebody who was emotionally harmful to you and your well-being. A lot of these podcast episodes are based on the ways that my 2021 heartbreaks have affected me and the situations that I've gone through. And they also happen to be things that you guys request on my TikTok or even my live streams or even just the YouTube comments or Instagram. So like I'm listening, I hear you guys out, and I'm also dealing with it too. So I get it more than anybody else. And... It's an active journey. I, I completely understand. But anyways, if you guys like these podcasts and you want more of them, make sure to leave a good rating. It actually really helps me out, especially if you're listening to me on Apple. And if you're listening to me on Spotify, girl, you better follow me. It, it all spreads fleeksy supremacy, which is the goal, is it not? I'm on TikTok. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. Go give your girl a follow there and support me everywhere. I'm fleeksy on everything. Bye, guys.